it's Loopline. Hope you're having a great day. In this video, it's just going to be a basic, pretty short video, at least I think so, on um, troubleshooting the contact form poster, becoming a more popular feature. And so submitting contact forms, basically you go to a website of a business, for example, and you use their contact form to send them a message, generally speaking, to solicit something, you know, try to sell them your product, basically, um, as an alternative to sending them a cold email. So I have a whole separate video on actually how to use the contact form submitter, which I'll link down in the description below, but it's on this same YouTube channel. But as far as troubleshooting it, if you run into problems, that's what this video is going to cover. So first we got to get a little setup here. I'll pause the video. I'm really just going to put in really basic stuff. So I've done up some basic info. Hey, thanks, stuff like that. We can see if we test it, it's just, you know, really basic stuff that I put in there. And um, we need some contact forms. I happen to have, this is a list that I got a hold of. Um, these are all already successful. And so um, with uh, an engine file, now I made a modified, slightly modified engine file and I keep it up to date now and then um, for contact form seven, which is one of the two platforms Scrapebox comes um, preset up with. The other one is WP secure contact form, but I'd have not mess with that one because it's not, um, as popular. So anyways, contact form seven has millions of forms. So I modify the file because they change things once in a while. I have it on the Scrapebox FAC website, uh, along with some more information of basic troubleshooting with like the success message. And so I'll link to that again, and I'll probably show it here in the video. So um, that file will get me is how I made this particular list. I'm not using that file on this install. This is just a default install of Scrapebox, just like you would download from Scrapebox server. So we'll see how things work. The first thing we want to consider is I'm going to shoot this list down here, which transfer it down here to the blog comment and start the poster. I've got a bogus proxy in here. And the reason I want to show you that is I want to show you what happens when something fails. So I'm just going to start it. This platforms column is the first thing you want to consider in troubleshooting. It is step one in a multi-step process to submitting. Scrapebox first tries to determine the actual platform and then it should name the platform here and then it tries to then figure out if it can post to the platform or if it fails or a host of other things. So if this platform column is blank like this and it just says failed, that means the page never loaded. Now more often than not you're not going to see all blank like this. You'll see like a name and it'll say unknown and maybe say WP this or WP that, some sort of name and then sometimes you'll see unknown and then sometimes you'll see blank. If you have one blank here and there out of a list of thousands of URLs, no big deal because some websites are offline. But if you have lots of blanks, like two or three blanks in one of these screens, um, or even two or three blanks out of 100, that means that those websites never loaded. So either those websites are offline, which is possible, that happens sometimes, but it, it's not likely that loads of websites are offline all at the same time, what's more likely is your proxies are bad, your proxies are overloaded and they're timing out because your timeouts are too low um, and that sort of thing. So we're going to cover that first. So I'm just going to stop this. And if you see lots of white boxes, those pages never load. So Scrapebox never even has a chance to even, it's a non-starter. So you have to fix that problem first. We're going to go to settings, connections, timeouts, and this timeouts tab. And I'm going to run the poster up and give it some more time. So you can go to test, go all the way to the right. Just max it out no problem um, I'm gonna go a little lower because I know my proxies that I'm about to load in are great I'm gonna do 30 seconds 10 seconds should be okay but your connections are directly related so I'm using 50 connections on the poster I'm actually gonna turn that down to 10 again you can turn down the connections and turn up the timeouts to test if you're struggling with this put poster connections to one and timeouts to the max and then test it if you're still getting loads of white boxes then there is some sort of issue with something on your machine like security software or your router blocking that and so you need to add exceptions complete exceptions for the entire scrape box folder whitelist scrape box etc in all of your security software anti-malware antivirus that sort of thing firewalls um, I would disable any PC optimization software if you're running any, and then you can whitelist in your router if your router supports it, and if your router does not support it, then you can turn off the router firewall as a test. Um, and then that should get you, with by the time you control your connections and your timeouts, test your proxies, make sure they're good. You only want to use private proxies, some sort of paid proxies. You do not want to use public proxies for posting. I'll talk about that more in a second. Once you make sure you're using 
good proxies that work and you have your connections down and your timeouts up if you still have lots of those white boxes check your security software and by the time you do all that you should be good most of the pages should be loading and then we can actually move on to actually testing what's wrong if it's not submitting so reason that you don't want to use um, proxies that are public is because if you do that what's gonna happen is those proxies can go bad and die at any point and so that's a problem for you obviously because that's gonna lower your success rate another problem is that those proxies can at any point show your IP address and you don't want to show your IP address when you're posting and the reason you don't want to show your IP address when you're posting if there's ever a complaint from sending a submission which is an automated thing it's not like the person on the other end is complaining most generally it's like automated um, running software on their server and they just send a complaint because they think it's like a spam type message and they do that there's software out there that just randomly does it to perfectly good messages and they just do it and so your ISP will get that complaint if your IP is seen and then they can actually send you a letter and say hey we're not going to sell you internet access like 10 years ago when I first started using Scrapebox happened to me I forgot to check the use proxies box did a huge submission um, sending comments got a complaint my ISP at t says hey if you don't stop we're gonna stop selling you internet and then you don't have internet obviously that's bad at your home or office so proxies take the complaint and they roll with it and away you go no worries and so always use some sort of paid private proxy um, there's various ones, whether that's a, a bat connect proxy, which sometimes aren't as good for submission. I would always recommend a private proxy or a semi-dedicated shared private proxy. Those two are your best options. Um, if you're using a rotating reverse bat connect proxy provider and they offer a data center based IPs, those are better than like residential IPs or a standard pool of proxies. Um, just because those data center IPs are more solid. You know, they may not be as good for scraping, but this is for posting. So, you know, we I've got loads of videos about scraping and, and proxies and that sort of stuff, but just for posting, those are your best proxies, some sort of data center based proxy or a private proxy or a shared private proxy. Um, again, I've got recommendations for proxy providers for all the different categories on the Scrapebox FAC website on scrapebox.com. They have their recommended proxy providers, and then you can find countless more on forums. And if nothing else, just go to Google and search private proxy, and away you go. And so that's the little spiel about making sure that your proxies are good. So now that that's all good, and we've got actual good proxies loaded in here, um, we are going to go ahead and give this an actual test here and just run it. We're running our 10 connections. See, we should have a name here. And this is all obviously contact form seven, which shows up as WP contact in the contact form here. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna pause this and come back to this in just a moment. Okay, so it's been running for a couple of minutes or so. And um, you can see here, we've got 200 and something failed, 70 something successful. We get these names. Now see these unknown ones, this is where Scrapebox could not recognize the platform. And that's fine. And you see here, we even have a white box. Page didn't load. Website's probably offline. Maybe the proxy failed. Happens once in a while. No big deal. Let's see. You can see most of these have a name. You do have some white boxes once in a while. This is a slightly older list, so there could be a few offline. Some of these may still be working. That one's not. So, uh, you know, some of them having a white box once in a while is fine. But you can see as we go through here, for the most part, they should be pretty named or unknown. Unknown is important because that means Scrapebox doesn't recognize this platform. If it doesn't even recognize the platform, it's not going to find a form to post to and it can't post. So that is also uh, a non-starter at the moment. You can train those platforms and in order to do that is really simple. Um, I'm not going to cover training in this video, but on my Scrapebox FAC website, you can just go here and just type in train. Or training it'll come up with this and I try to compile scrapebox.com has a guide to this guide I try to keep everything in here that they have plus anything that I find that's helpful for me along the way or helpful for people that I talk to etc so um, you can kind of go through and there's lots of information as you keep going and going and going I kind of divide it up into sections etc etc um, the one thing I'll say quick note I haven't updated this um, I use this tool here for debugging really amazing tool um, Scrapebox actually has a socket 
uh, add-on testing tool. I said the name of that wrong. Anyways, it's super helpful and it's free and it's included in Scrapebox. I don't yet have a video on it. It's coming. Um, and so I'll also include that eventually on this post, but you can check out that tool as well. Um, but if, if it doesn't make sense to train them, that's beyond the scope of this video. You can investigate that. Um, but anything that's unknown, that's there. So we're going to deal with the named ones. So of the named ones, I have some successes. Great. I have some just failed that just had some sort of error or couldn't find a form. This is failed general unknown. So, okay, let me say that again. On failed, when it says the name, but it says failed here, it knows it failed. So it tried to post and it completely failed. Now that could be because the form said, hey, you didn't fill out something on the form. It could said, hey, this looks like spam. It could said, hey, you know, your IPs are blocked by a Kismet or some other plugin that we're using, which happens. It's not a lot, but it happens. You know, but we're doing this in mass, so um, this is thousands. You could work in the millions. So sometimes it fails, right? It knows it failed. If it says failed general unknown, it knows that it failed, but it doesn't know what happened. So in the INI file, let me pull it up and I'll show you. This video is turning into not short, but at least we're going to cover everything. So we can see here, just kind of, you can hopefully see a little bit of this here. Um, in your Scrapebox folder under configuration and then platforms, you can see all the platforms. This is WP Contact, which is our form INI we're using right now. So if you look, we have a success and a failed failure. Success means this is the message that the blog says. So you go to a contact form and um, you type in, hey, my name is Bob, my email, my message, hey, you know, here buy my stuff, whatever. Then in you submit, it says, hey, it was successful. Hey, it wasn't successful because you forgot to fill in your name, whatever. If it was successful, there are various messages, and you can see them separated by the pipe key. Again, I'm not going to get into training INIs in this, but you can see, so it has a little bit of code, and the reason for the code is just to rule out false positives, because if we just put the word thanks in here, then anytime it sees the word thanks on a page, you know, it will say successful. Even if the page says, hey, thanks in advance for contacting us, then when Scrapebox submits, it'll see that text on the page and it'll say successful, even though it may not have been successful at all. So if you include a little code around the message itself, you rule out false positives. If you're not worried about that or you're just testing, just slam in the text that you see on there um, just to get going. And then you can work on ruling out false positives later by expanding it. But don't go nuts and put in like half the page. And so you can see here, there's a few different success messages. Scrapebox is explicit. If it does not see one of these success messages 100% for sure, then it will say some sort of failed message. You see here where it says success and success, it found one of these success messages. If it failed, it knows that it failed completely because it found a failure message or it knows that there was some major error. If it says failed general unknown, it didn't find a, a failure message for sure. So it wasn't 100% certain that it failed. Um, and it also didn't find some sort of major error, like the website was down or whatever. So therefore, um, it says failed general unknown. It thinks it failed. It's pretty sure it failed, but it doesn't know why it failed. And so it says failed general unknown. So sometimes that could be a, a CAPTCHA if the CAPTCHA wasn't solved correctly. Sometimes that could be um, the success message itself. So like this message right here may have gone through, but if this website or WP Contact Form 7 has changed their default success message and that default success message doesn't happen to be included in this INI file, then Scrapebox won't know for 100% certain that it went through, even though it might have, so it will automatically default to fail general unknown because it doesn't want to say yes. It would rather say, we're not really sure, but we're pretty sure it failed, but we don't really know. So that's fail general unknown. So fail general unknown, you can go to my Scrapebox Fact website and type in the word contact. And you will have this contact form poster says failed. Nice little post. I just I detail what I just talked about with the success, success messages and, and failed messages and that sort of thing. See here, and then I give some examples here, and I talk about how to find it, blah, blah, blah. Then I have this nice divider. Then here is the file I was talking about. This is contact form 7. 
Um, if I ever include, if I ever happen to do any other platforms, I'll probably put them on this page too. You can download it. I, every time I find an update that is helpful for Contact Form 7, I stick it in the file and I upload it here. So I try to keep this up to date. Um, I don't necessarily put dates on here, but you can look at the, the modification date of the file. I think the last one was like a month ago at the time of this video. Anyways, um, you can download it and you can use it. And so once you do that, you may get a little bit better success rate. Some of these really failed probably aren't going away and the success are already success, but a lot of these failed general known can go away. So we can see here out of the first 1,000 ish, 1,550, whatever. We've got about 290 something success and 700 something, you know, 770 failed, right? So let's close out of this. What I'm going to do is pause the video and that file I just showed you, this, this file here, I'm going to open it up and set it up on the posting on that so you can see the difference. So this is Scrapebox out of the box. Now again, Scrapebox updates their definition files from time to time too. So this happens to be January 30th to 2020. If Scrapebox comes out with an update today or tomorrow and updates these, then you know their performance out of the box could be completely different and it might be even better than mine. So you should try it out of the box, but if you wanna try my file, go ahead and try that too. And so let me pause the video. So this instance of Scrapebox is, loading my mod is running my modified file. Same list of URLs, same proxies, um, and don't try to steal a username and pass because it's not all there. It's partly hidden, and I change them from time to time anyways. And um, same information over here. We can test Bob Smith, blah, blah, blah. So let's start the contact form poster, and let's just hit start here and see what happens. So same 10 threads. Um, actually, I lied. It's same seven threads. I've got this one set a little bit lower just because it's a completely different instance. Now, you can see here was uh, the other instance, and I should have left it up here. Um, we can see here the, the failed messages in this uh, response field here. So we can see, so here's the first round of messages. So we have what? Research science, angel expression, that sort of thing. So we can see those same URLs trying to get them in here. Um, you can see research science, research science here, and then you can see failed, failed, failed. So you can see angel expression and nutritional, whatever this is here. These failed on the default scrape box one, but on the modified one I have, they were successful. And you can see as we go through here, remember there's a lot more failed general unknown because scrape box didn't know. And so here there are successes. So you can see ah, there's a few failures, there's a few proxy errors or website errors, whatever. But remember, we had like 777 that were failed and 294 that were successful. So it was about, you know, I'm going to call it 65, 68% failed, and we'll call it 68% failed and 32% successful with the default file on this particular list of 4,396 URLs. Again, same, same list here. Now, when I modified the INI file, and all I changed in the INI file was success messages. That's it. So the success messages that we're talking about right here, um, I actually show you the file while it's posting. Let me pull it up. So here's the files. This one is Scrapebox default. This is my modified one. You can see under success, we've got, uh, what is this? Two success messages, I think, which is fine. And no failure messages. Under mine, I've gone ahead and been more explicit. I added several failed messages that I found, like if it was blocked because of spam, or please try to contact the administrator, blah, blah, blah. There was an error trying to send your message. Please try again later. So we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is a failed. Um, because again, failed general unknown, it doesn't know what's going on. So what I like to do is when I can find a failed message for sure that's failed, I add it in here. Because then in my poster, I'll get a lot more explicit responses. Failed failed success failed general unknown so like this one i could go troubleshoot this particular one but i prefer to be as explicit as possible so um just because that's how i did it there's not a right or wrong answer there it just helps me and so you see i have more lines here see how mine is bigger it's like three lines long and there's is like a line and a half or right here so again it's not wrong either way um i just have put you know, found that this particular I and I works better. And then also you can see here, I've added in some other things, um, a couple of honey pots I found and, and this and that and the other um, for different captures and blah, blah, blah. So that file's available to download if you want. 
um, but we can already see our success ratio is success for the first little bit here is on this list. Now this isn't saying on every list. This is 250 and 28. So out of the first, well, we're getting close to 300. And I would say that this is probably like a, you know, 85, 90% um, success rate. And so Alexa tells me actually success rate is closer to uh, 90%. Uh, maybe a little higher as we're going along here, maybe 92, 93%. So anyways, so that's this list. Now, if your list says whole lot of these unknowns, Scrapebox doesn't know what the platform is. If your list says a lot of names, but a lot of fail, then it could just be success messages, you know, that sort of thing. So you can train it again on the Scrapebox FAQ website. You can type in the word train for um, the training article. And you can type in the word success, or not success, contact for that article on how to train the success messages there and also to get my um, uh, file. And I'll put both those links to those two articles in the description in YouTube down below. But here it is. You can see the difference. Just a couple of little tweaks on the failed and success messages there got the exact same list from a, what did we call it, a 68% failure rate to less than 10% failure rate. So Scrapebox can post to it, and it may have even been posting to it successfully, but it just didn't even know it. So you just had to tell it how to, how to know that it was successfully posting to it. So a couple of tweaks there, and it took a few minutes to get that done. Of course, to build that file, I've made some changes, some troubleshooting, um, but you can build it and then you sh can submit to a, a list. So if we had a million URLs and we used the default one, assuming the success rates were the same, we could get, and it was, you know, potentially possible, then we might get a, what was it, 32% success rate. But if we do a little tweaks, so that's like 320,000, with a few tweaks, we can get up to 900,000 or more. So almost triple, you know, what it was. So it's worth training it a little bit because an extra 600,000 contact forms is a lot of submissions that you can go to. And then as you go into millions, there's tens of millions of contact forms out there on the internet. You know, you scale that number up, obviously that makes a big difference. And you can train entirely new platforms as well. Again, not covering that in the video. This was supposed to be short and quick, uh, but I decided to go into more detail just so you have it. Um, you can watch it several times. I felt like talking fast today. Tried to slow it down, but that's what I got. But you can play the video over again. And so um, this is how you can take and modify it a little bit, do a little bit of troubleshooting. And again, the last thing I'll say is if we load in a generic list, uh, it could just be different. So let's just do it. And so I loaded in just a basic stupid list. Um, I searched the word car. I use this list for troubleshooting. Uh, sometimes and so you can see a lot of this nonsense um, this is a good example sometimes I refer to this as like a bad list and by bad I don't mean bad I just mean incompatible right so a there may not be a contact form on Daniel's total car care here in the first place B um, the page never loaded because we got a blank white box I don't even know if the website's still active this is an old list right so um, there might not even be a contact form on some of these, but let's say that there is. Scrapebox doesn't know the platform, so it can't post to it. It knew this platform, but it couldn't find a form. So it says, hey, this is a WordPress site. It could be contact form seven, but there's not actually a form here that we recognize. So they've either modified the form or whatever. So if you get a list like this and it just all says failed, you know, if it's full of unknowns, there's nothing you can do with this list out of the box. So you have two choices. Train the platforms that are unknown, or get a better list. And so if you're using your own list that you got like, yellow pages or you just got a list because of whatever, you just scraped a bunch of random websites, again, you're either gonna have to spend the time training it or you're going to have to get a better list. If you want a better list, Scrapebox has platform footprints built in. So you click the platforms button when you're scraping, click platforms here, go down here and click WP Contact Form 7, WP Secure Contact Form, close out of this, put in your keywords and then when you go to scrape, um, it's going to give you URLs that 
Google and Scrapebox think, not that Scrapebox thing, Scrapebox can ask Google to give URLs that are more compatible with Scrapebox out of the box. You can see the footprints that are built in, and so if we go back here, you can build your own footprints, have a video on that. If we go back here, and now we take this list, remove duplicate URLs, and then we shoot this list down here to the commenter and start the contact form poster and hit go. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, there's not a bunch of unknowns. There's some, because Google's not perfect and Scrapebox is gonna to go to town here. Now again, on these, obviously, I need to go do some training because these particular URLs, it doesn't know. They're unknown. Let's uh, see, here's the WP Secure form and that sort of thing, but we do have some successes, whereas on my generic list we loaded and we had none. So I don't wanna make it unclear, this 4,000 list I loaded in, I took like mountain load of URLs, thousands of URLs, submitted to them, took the successful, exported them here, all successful entries, and then saved them to lists, and that's what this 4,000 is. So you're not gonna go harvest a list of 4,000 URLs and get a 90% success rate. It's not gonna happen. What you can do is harvest a list like I just did of 200 URLs, and it looks like we have maybe about a 10% success rate out of the box. So save those off, and then you have 10% success, of the ones that are unknown, you can train them if you want, but the ones that are known, go do a little tweaking on the failed general unknown and see if you can't up that success rate from the harvested list and away you go. And so that's how you can do troubleshooting. Um, if you don't wanna do anything and you just wanna post to contact form seven URLs, grab the contact form that I have um, to start with on the blog down, use the footprints that Scrapebox has built in to the platforms and only choose Contact Form 7 and then go to town. Post to, scrape a giant list of millions of URLs, post to all of them, get yourself 10, 50, 100, 200, 500,000 successful, export those as successful and then use that list to start your marketing, make a little money, make a few sales and then from there build up, spend a little time you know, training some platforms, go on a forum like Black Hat World and share your INI files or send them to me. If you have an INI file you train and you know it works for you or you made some changes, send them to me. I'll include them in my file or share them out to everybody else so everybody can benefit. And if everybody works together and shares, then there's that much more that we can all accomplish. And so that's how you can troubleshoot the contact form poster. Thanks for hanging into this long video that was supposed to be short. And I hope you have a fantastic day and do great success with contact forms. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.